We just had our first real issue with the RV. Luckily, it turned out not to be too big of a deal, but it still caused me to pull a lot of my hair out. Luckily, it didn't take you too long to figure it out because you can't afford to lose too much hair, honey. Thanks, darling. <laughs> <laughs> to warn you this video isn't going to be for everybody but if you do run into the same issue that we ran into I'm sure you'll be glad you watched it second of all I am NOT an electrician I am NOT telling you to do this I'm not telling you to follow the steps that I took I'm just showing you an issue that we had and how we resolved it so last week Dina went to vacuum the RV and we noticed the vacuum cleaner wouldn't come on it's a central vac I didn't think anything of it in the very beginning. I figured we just probably popped a circuit breaker. I would just reset the breaker and she can get back to work. Piece <laughs> of cake. <laughs> I went to, a, to our breaker panel. None of the breakers were popped. The one that I knew was, I knew it was on a certain leg. I did go ahead and reset that breaker anyways, just to make sure it didn't help anything. I checked, we have a couple GFIs in the RV. I checked the GFIs. I, again, I wasn't sure what leg they were on, if they had anything to do with the vacuum cleaner or not, but I wanna go ahead and check them anyways, and the GFIs were fine. So now I'm a little confused. I didn't know why the vacuum cleaner wasn't coming on. Is it a power issue or not? I did go into the basement looking, maybe there was another breaker down in there specific mm -hmm. to the to the um, vacuum cleaner, but I couldn't find anything. So now I'm, I'm getting a little confused. And then we realized the refrigerator wasn't working. Yeah, when I was down in the basement checking that out, Dina came out and told me the refrigerator's not working either. So now I'm really confused. So I come back up and it, we started checking some other things too. The refrigerator wasn't working, the stove wasn't working, a coffee pot right. wasn't, didn't have power to it, and some of the receptacles didn't have right. power to them as well. So now I was really confused at this point. I know what legs some of these are on. Again, I already checked that breaker. I even went into the, the main breaker box or the panel. I pulled uh, the front cover off and I checked the breaker itself and I had power coming in and coming out of that breaker. At this point, I'm basically lost. I don't have any wiring diagram, so it makes it very hard to troubleshoot. I did call Grand Design. I got their, um, their support uh, staff or right. uh, a support person there. I explained the issue to them and really my whole purpose was I just wanted a wiring diagram. I needed to know you know where the power is coming from and where it's going. They couldn't give me a wiring diagram. They basically said they don't exist uh, and that's really not the answer I was hoping for. So I was kind of left on my own at this point. The lady was nice enough. She did give me this or email me a, a picture and it's, this is basically the closest thing to a wiring diagram. It shows you uh, some of the different legs and what outlets are supposed to be on which leg. Now this image also is not 100% accurate for our RV, but it did give me a good idea. And I'll show you what I ended up doing with this in a little bit. So now at this point, I'm kind of lost. I know some of the outlets, some of the lights on the the, the main breaker, uh, or I should say the the breaker I know these are on, work and other ones didn't. So I'm kind of thinking there's probably a a break in the wire or maybe a loose wire mm -hmm. going, you know, from point A to point B. The washing machine was running at the time. It's on spin cycle, so the whole the whole RV was just shaking. <laughs> so because of the, the washing machine on, on spin cycle and shaking, I'm kind of really at this point assuming we had a loose wi or wire come loose. So that's kind of the direction I'm, I'm heading. So without having a wire diagram, it's kind of hard to say where to start. I know where the la what lights are working, I know what's not working, but I don't know the direction of the wires. What's, you know, does it go from receptacle A to receptacle B to receptacle C? I don't know that. So it's kind of hit and miss and, and a guess. I went ahead and tried the easiest outlet first. There's one behind our main television, didn't have any power to it. I took that off the wall. I took the little plate off the back of the receptacle. I didn't have any power coming into that. And of course I didn't have any power coming out. So I checked a few of these 
and I did kind of, I thought anyways, I narrowed it down to there's a couple receptacles just inside the stove. It's where the stove and the refrigerator plug into. Neither one of these had any power coming into them and they are a total pain to get to. I had to try to, I had to pull the drawer out mm -hmm. and again, I. I think the drawer, the width's only about six inches, so you're really reaching back all the way, yeah. trying to own them out to see if you have power. It, a pain. It, it was a pain. Yeah. This is when I started pulling my hair out. <laughs> I was really, really worried that I had a loose wire in one of these receptacles, and it was just going to be a nightmare to try to, to try to fix. Right. And that's when I think Dina saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dina had the idea, well, let's just get on Facebook and there's a Grand Design Momentum's owner forum. So we posted a question on the forum. I basically explained my situation. I told them what wasn't working. And within, a, I bet 15 minutes, yeah. we had two or three responses. Or yeah. Right. And they said, well, did you check your sub panel? And I'm like, what sub panel? I didn't know I had a sub panel. So we went back and forth a little bit. I asked a couple questions and they respond. Very great, uh, great response yeah. and great response times. What I found out is underneath our step, the steps that go up into the master bedroom, the bottom step, there's a three breaker sub panel in there. And that's where our problem was. Who would have ever known? Yeah, who would have known <laughs> Grand Design would put a sub panel <laughs> underneath a step? I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> I was also told, though, that it depends on what options you have as to where they put that sub panel. So right. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for it. I can't verify that. I do know our sub panel is below the front step. Uh, if you do have this issue and it's not there, it is. They, I was told it's they can put them in different locations. But the main thing is there is a sub panel with three breakers. Your guess is just as good as ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. So once once I took the the top cover off, or took the step off, I took the cover off of the the sub panel. I could see the three breakers in there. I checked them all out. Uh, one of them was flaky. I, you know, the best way I could put it. So we just decided let's go ahead and replace all three breakers, and that's that's what we did. We um, we we took out all three breakers. So I did take the old breaker to Home Depot with me. And there's a couple things just to be aware of. These are 15 amp breakers. Uh, they're they're listed right here. So you want to make sure you get another 15 amp breaker, and probably just as important, you can see. I don't know if you can see right in front of my hand there. This is the connector. This is what actually snaps into place into your sub panel. There's multiple 15 amp breakers in different kinds and some of them have different connectors. So I wasn't that familiar with the breaker so I did take this one with me just to make sure I got the, the right connector. So that's just something to be aware of. Once we replaced it, snapped it back in place, make sure it was snapped all the way in place, set it up, we were good to go. We haven't had a problem since. Thank God. Thank God. But while I had the step off, it gave me an idea. Remember this picture I got from Grand Design? What I wanted to do was, in case this ever happens again, I know for sure what my problem is. With those three breakers, the steps I took now, I already had the steps off, so I might as well do something with it. I, I tripped each breaker one at a time and then I went to all my outlets. So let's just say breaker A. I, I basically turned it off if you want to think of it that way. I went to each of the outlets in my RV to check which outlets were not working. And then I color coded this, this image. So now I know all these breakers are all these little spots on this image with a red dot on them or on a certain breaker. I turned that breaker back on, turned the second one off and did this repeated the same steps again with a different color. Turn the second one back off or back on again, turn the third one off and did the same process again. So now I know which which outlets in the RV are on which of those breakers in that sub panel. So now if that sub if a breaker ever popped in that sub panel, I know for sure I can go up and look at, oh, these, these four outlets are not working. I know for sure they're on that breaker. So now 
I know, okay, I gotta, I'm going to have to pull that step up again mm -hmm. and, and reset that breaker. So I, I figured why not? The step was already off. We already had everything apart. Might yeah. as well learn something from it. It was a great it. idea. And you know, so in the future, we, we know for sure. Yeah. So let me just show you. We'll show you now some of the what we did, what everything looks like, and hopefully it, um, if you run into an issue like this, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. I knew the problem was somehow related to this breaker or the leg this breaker um, supplies power to. I knew that was an issue. I did reset the breaker a few times. Still, I didn't have any power to anything. So my next thought process was, let me check to make sure I have power coming into that breaker. Maybe there's a loose wire coming into the breaker. That was my next step. So I ended up taking this front panel off to see if I had any voltage coming into the breaker. Once I took the panel off, I had access to the breakers. Now please remember, there's, I am not telling you to do this. There's 120 volts in here, this is live. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't, don't even try this. I needed to check to make sure I had power coming out of this breaker. So I do have my voltmeter set to AC, hitting the legs. This is the outs, output of the breaker. And I can see in this particular case, I have 117 volts coming out of the breaker. So you can, you can see right here, we, we do have voltage. So now at this point, I know for sure I have voltage coming into my breaker and I have voltage coming out of my breaker. So now I need to go to the next step. So now that I know I have power coming into my breaker and out of my breaker, I need to figure out why I don't have power to some of my receptacles. Again, this is a receptacle behind our main TV. It didn't have any power to it. I did take my, my voltmeter and check, I had no power. Again, the only reason why I chose this one because it was one of the easier ones to get to. I did take this receptacle off. Now in the back, is, I think honestly it's kind of cheesy. The wires just kind of push into place. You have to take a little piece of plastic off. It's really kind of the only thing holding the wires in. I did check this one. I didn't have any power coming into it. Of course, I didn't have any power out of it. So now I'm at the point I really need to start backtracking and starting to look at some of my other receptacles to see why maybe one of them has power coming in but doesn't have any power coming out of it and then I know that's where my problem is. Luckily at this point, Dina had a great idea and we contacted one of the Grand Design Momentum Facebook forums. I posted a question, I explained the process of what was going on, what wasn't working. And honestly, within I bet 10, 15 minutes, we had a response. And one of those responses saved my, saved my hair, trust me, because I was pulling it out at this point. What they told us was there's a sub panel, a three breaker sub panel below, and I think in some cases, they did say it depends on what some of your options are, where Grand Design will actually place the sub-panel. What I was told, what the forum, the response told us was, if you have an inverter, in which we do, we got the solar package, if you have an inverter on the 397, the sub-panel will be below the bottom step, the steps that go up into the master bedroom. So that was my next step. I wanted to check the bottom step to see if there was a sub panel in there. So let's go over there and I'll show you what I found. Now in our particular case, our sub panel is below this, this bottom step. If you don't have a 397, you should probably still have a sub panel. Most, most likely you do. It's just gonna be in a different location. So this video is still, hopefully it still helps you even though your sub panel could be in a different location. They do have four, four Phillip head screws holding this bottom step in. The back two screws are a little bit of a pain in the neck to get to. You can't get a very tall screwdriver in there. So I had a little, a little stubby screwdriver which helps out. So let's go ahead and get this bottom step off and I'll show you what the sub panel looks like. Now you do want to be a little bit careful pulling this step out. You don't want to you know, scratch, your, scratch your walls or anything. So just be a little bit careful with that. Now you can see down here, this is our sub panel. We do have three breakers in here. 
when we ran into this issue, this very first breaker here was, was a problem. I did reset it a couple times and still nothing, nothing happened. So at this point, my next step was to pull the top off of this sub panel and check for voltage coming in and out of this, this uh, breaker. So let me show you what I did at this point. So once I got the four screws off, I just pull this straight up. So what I'm trying to verify now is I have three, three breakers here. I want to see if all three breakers have power coming in and all three breakers have power going out of the breakers. At this point, I've already cycled the breakers off and on a few times, so if they were tripped, they're, they're not tripped anymore. So again, checking the output of a breaker. You can see here we have 117 volts coming out of this one. I went to the next breaker, same thing. And the third breaker, same thing. Now, when this, when this issue actually happened, the very first breaker, I had output sometimes and sometimes I didn't. So I really kind of thought it might just been a loose wire. I did cut the power again. I pulled this first breaker out and I just checked to make sure the, and the wire was very tight. I plugged the breaker back in place again and it still, it just seemed a little bit flaky. So at this point I did know that there's something wrong with this breaker. I'm, I'm assuming maybe it's just a weak breaker. So that's when we went, went ahead and went to Home Depot, bought another breaker and I just replaced all three breakers. So now our problem's fixed. However, since I have this all apart right now, let's figure out what receptacles are on what breaker. So now that we have the cover off of our sub panel, you know we have three breakers in there. And what I really want to do at this point was turn off a breaker one at a time and then go around the RV and check to see what receptacles are not working. This way here, I can use this image that Grand Design sent me. I'll kind of color code it so now I know what receptacles are on what breaker. If this ever happens again in the future I'll know exactly what breaker's wrong and I can kind of double check it before I start pulling the step up again. So what I ended up doing we're going to turn off, we're going to shut off one of the breakers. We're going to take a trusty little night light. You can actually use anything. It's just, to me, a night light was uh, pretty easy to use. And I'm just going to take a Sharpie with me and we're going to walk around the RV and start checking receptacles. Very first receptacle we come to, I actually have a fan already plugged in here. So I'm going to turn this fan on. Nothing happens. So now I know this receptacle doesn't have any power to it because I turned that breaker off. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this on the image. I plugged in the night light. It's not coming on. So now I know this one is on the same one as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rest of the RV doing the same steps. I'm going to take the night light, plug it into the receptacle and see which ones are not working so we know which one's on on this particular leg. So I color coded those. Now what I'm going to do is turn that breaker back on, turn the second breaker off, and do the same process all over again. This time we'll just use a different color to color code. Now that we went through our second breaker, we have all these marked off. These are all actually on the GFI circuit. We're gonna turn that circuit back on, turn our last circuit off, and do the step one more time. So now that we've finished going through all three of these circuits, through the whole RV, we have our image here. You can see I have the different receptacles color coded for which, which um, circuit they're on. Now I'll keep this, I'll keep this in our record. So if we do have a problem with one of these receptacles, now I know what breaker it is and I know right where to go. I don't wanna start pulling up these steps again if I'm not sure. This way here I know for sure what breaker it is before I start taking the step apart. Now we have all this done, let's go ahead and put everything back together. So now that we have everything put back together, we kind of turned a bad situation into something that gave us a little bit more information about our RV. We now have a, a diagram of the RV with color-coded receptacles. So now we know what receptacle is on what leg. 
So I hope this helps you. I know this is very specific to our RV, but I do know a lot of RVs have very similar electrical system. So hopefully this does help you somehow in your RV. We hope that you enjoyed our video. We really hope that you don't ever have to go through this issue like we did. Yeah. We're very grateful to the Grand Design Momentum Facebook Forum who helped us out tremendously. They were yeah. awesome. Thank you. And you actually saved my hair. I was pulling it out quicker and it would grow back. So <laughs> I, Dina thanks you too. <laughs> If you have any questions or comments, please let us know below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the like button. And remember, always live life to the fullest.